Could you please begin by telling us how you started in the field of communications? Was it, or was it a, a personal passion of yours or was it something that sort of came out of necessity? I was the only person available who could speak English. I was living in Borneo mm -hmm. and I was working for a British import-export company and the local radio station, which was owned and run by the government, had a vacancy for a part-time English-speaking announcer um, at a loose end uh, mm -hmm. in my spare time. So I took up the job and the guy that hired me said, you can have the job on one condition, you get rid of that awful Australian accent. Mm -hmm. And so I had to work over time to get rid of that, which when I came back to Australia made it difficult to get a job in commercial radio or television. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, a, that's very interesting. Uh, you mentioned Borneo. Uh, could you please tell us how you think travel has impacted your work? Well, travel's been a lot of my work. I mean, I've covered uh, eight Olympic Games, so I've been to a lot of countries and seen a lot of, of things which, you know, have broadened my knowledge. And I mean, I'd recommend to anybody, whether they're interested in communications or the media as a career, the best thing you can do in life is to travel. Travel is the ultimate. Everybody should do it. Well said. Uh, do you, when you made the leap from radio to television, what were some challenges you experienced? Like, how were they different, and how do you think it might have impacted your communicative practice? I worked in radio for 15 or 16 years. Never wanted to work in television, but I was doing a job and not being paid commensurately for it in radio. And when I asked for the promotion and the increase in pay, they said no. So I thought, well, damn you. Uh, so I went out and hawked myself around other radio stations and just coincidentally went to two television stations just because I'd never been inside a TV station. And keep in mind I was already 34 years of age at that time and had never been in a TV studio. But Channel 7 at that time required somebody to do sports reporting for the news. And sport had been what I, a large part of what I'd been doing in radio and so they hired me. But it was a huge learning curve. So uh, you've commentated in an extensive range of fields of entertainment like news broadcasting and sports. Uh, are there any notable crossovers that have affected the way that you present? What between news and sport? Yeah. Well sport is news. Uh, that's what a lot of sports broadcasters neglect. Um, and that was, see I had, a, I had a background in news before and a, sport was an accident. Um, I was working at 2UE in Sydney as a reporter and newsreader um, and I finished my shift one Saturday morning, breakfast news shift, and the guy that did the Saturday afternoon sports show called in sick and they were running around in a panic like chooks with their heads chopped off and I said, well, I'll do it. And they said, but do you know anything about sport? And I said, I went to a Catholic boys boarding school. How can I not know about sport in sport? You see, people get carried away with in sport with the, the rules of the game and the technicalities of the game but it's the people who make the stories there is no story in a guy sitting in a car doing 300 kilometers per hour behind a helmet you've got to get behind the helmet you've got to get to the guy when he gets out of the car or before he gets into the car and get behind the scenes and talk about him as a human being sell the people and you sell the sport hmm. Uh, leading on from that, could you maybe elaborate on how you personally deal with criticism of your work? Look, you get that, and I let it wash over me, because I know in my own heart and in my own head that I'm doing the best and most honest job that I can do. Hmm. And uh, one final uh, question, could you give any advice for anyone looking to get into some sort of communications industry? Apart from getting an umbrella, uh, well, look, every case is different. There is no, I mean, today there are plenty of media journalism university courses that you can undertake to get a foot in the door. But, but even if you finish that course, and regardless of what mark you get, you've still got to get a foot in the door somewhere. Now, how you do that is entirely an individual thing then you just follow your nose. All right, well, well done. Thank you very much for your time. A great pleasure, James.